Hello, I'm Cheryl, and welcome to today's class, which is called Your First Sweater on the Bond, or as it's known here at the school, The Fewest Number of Exact Steps, which is exactly how we try to get through the sweater. It is the second day of a four-day curriculum here at the school, bond curriculum, and the first day, Meet Your Bond, is a prerequisite for this class. I will also assume that you have taken the videotape, Meet Your Bond, because all the skills of open cast on, binding off, uh, knitting the shoulder seams together that were covered in that tape will not be covered here again. Um, this is a tutorial here at the school, which means each student works individually, and as he or she gets to a particular place where they need to implement a new skill or a new combination of techniques, I go over and work on those with them. Otherwise, I talk them through the sweater step by step by step. Now, although we're making a small sweater today, it takes a long time. I've had students come from as far away as Arizona, and they have been bond dealers and teachers themselves. And I have had no one able to finish that sweater in a six to eight hour knitting session. Now, of course, I'm talking at them all that time, and you won't have that disadvantage. But for yourself, you should plan at least eight to 10 hours in order to complete this project from beginning to end. I actually timed myself. People are always asking me, how long did it take you to make that particular sweater? And the one we're making today took me at one point three and a half hours, but that doesn't count. It looks like Julia Child's kitchen around here. I have versions of this sweater everywhere. And on one particular version, I raced the clock, I stood up, I threw waste yarn all over the place, and I went as fast as I could. It took two hours and 10 minutes to knit it and get it all connected, and it took an hour and 15 minutes in order to sew it up. So plan accordingly. You have two goals in taking this class. The first is to begin to understand the process of making sweaters. Most hand knit patterns tell you to make a series of pieces, you put them in a pile, and then you cope with them later. The new process that we're using today is building step by step by step. One piece, then the second piece we add to it, then the third and the fourth. You watch the pieces grow in your hands. You watch a sweater grow in your hands, and it's much more satisfying, and it's much quicker and easier. Also, the techniques look good. This, in fact, is one of those same sweaters, this lace one. It's a drop shoulder like we're building today. The only difference is I had to knit the sleeves from the bottom up, so there was a very slightly different joining of the shoulder, but it made it more satisfying to do this way. Your um, the sweater that you're going to make today is this one, a child size three, drop shoulder. It is a, um, has a reverse transfer around the neck. There is a nice flexible folded over crew neck rib on it. And the reason it's a child size three is because you can't knot off in between by falling asleep and going through large expanses of knitting. The reason it's a drop shoulder is because that's a very popular style. Nowadays, fully 50% of the popular patterns in popular consumer magazines for sweaters in the last five years have been drop shoulder, so it's one that you'll be able to use. And it is easy to construct almost entirely on the bond. Well, this folded neck rib is a little bit different from the one at the bottom, which you could also apply here. But this brings me to the second reason that you're taking this tape today, and that is to learn specifically new skills. This was my opportunity to teach you just one more skill. In order to facilitate going through both of those skills, I have a suggestion that for the first time through, you watch the tape all the way through, going with the pauses and trying to get the process into your head. The more you can let it settle in and simmer on the back burner and become a part of your knitting experience, the more satisfied I think you'll be. The second time you view it, stop at each section and work through it. And on that particular viewing, you're working on making a sweater and working on these new skills. Now I'm going to show you a blueprint of the sweater that we're making today. And <clears throat> excuse me, it is enclosed with your videotape. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, a blueprint is simply a way of translating pattern material so that it is much easier to read. I hate to stop and read through a magazine and turn to page 78, column 
see, dig under through all those numbers to find what I need. Instead, I transfer every one of my patterns to this form. This has all the information I need. We see that this is a picture of both the front and the back. These are stitches. We're going to cast on 48 stitches. We're going to knit to row 33, where we're going to do something. We're going to knit to row 66, where we're going to do something. This is the shoulder shaping. This ordinarily on a drop shoulder, it's just straight across, but I wanted you to practice this short row shoulder shaping again. There are 20 stitches in the back of the neck. Each of those shoulders are shaped in seven stitches. This is the front. This is a crew neck shaping, and it stops where we remove 12. Now notice I didn't write stitches here. By that time, we know that these are stitches. We have a series of four every other row decreases. The idea in this picture is that no number appears unless we actually have to stop and pay attention to it. This is our rib information down here. It's 47 stitches, 12 plus one rows, just like you did um, that one last loose row on Meet Your Bond, and on a key plate too, and it's a two by one rib. This is the sleeve. It is knit from the top down. These numbers along this side are your decrease rows. We are going to cast on and attach that sleeve to the body of the sweater as we go on. The only important information at the top here is the gauge information, and it is based on my averages for this weight yarn and this key plate. It's likely that you're going to get real close to this, and if you don't get exactly the same gauge as me, it's going to be close enough that you'll be able to pass it off as a sweater, so you won't have to worry about it. Now, this construction diagram shows you the order in which we're going to make the pieces. First the back, up to there, then the front. We're going to connect one shoulder, then we'll do this rib, then we will connect a sleeve and another sleeve. And when we're done, before we ever pick up a sewing needle, we're going to have this much of it done. We have one little seam to work in at the neck edge, and we have one seam under the arm. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time to start your knitting. Oh, notice today that I have a counter on. It is the best invention since cream cheese. My clicker is as close as possible to zero. And there's a little flange. I have another one here to show you. This little flange that's on my counter is tucked under the bar that's under your bond. Okay, so make sure that it's pulled back and the little spring is attached. And make sure before you ever cast on that your counter is working. Sometimes if it doesn't work, it indicates that there's a little bit of a warp in your table. Okay, and you can bend it around or shim it with green cards or whatever until it's working properly for you. So today we're going to start with the carriage on the right. And I want you with an open cast on to cast on 48 stitches with a, a key plate three with your waist yarn, knit six rows. Take out key plate three, put in key plate two, and you're going to knit one row with a key plate two. It is that very base row that we're going to pick up and knit the rib from. I find by knitting one tight row there, it helps to close up the gaps that could be there. Then you are going to knit, put your key plate three back in. You're with your sweater yarn now, and you're going to knit to row 33, and then you're going to stop. And I will show you how, how to mark the underarm depth. If we mark it now, when it comes time to rehang that armhole and knit it down, it'll go much more quickly than if we have to count all those rows or measure the inches. Now, I know I've given you a lot of instructions just now, but along with you, your blueprint, you see that you have a written set of directions that are step by step that correspond exactly to the pauses in this tape. That's to help you when you are by your lonesome, and I'm not there to prod you, to get through every step before you turn the tape back on. So, meet me when your back is at row 33.